Just a few more passages that I love about, about our salvation that I probably should have covered a little bit, a little, you know, a few minutes ago, but we'll just cover them now, is the statements that are just so um, powerful and, and conclusive and just there it is, right? I mean, we look at the eternal life, everlasting life, those are good terms. But look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 10. It's one of my favorite passages to explain, you know, like once saved, always saved. That this is just the way that it is. That when Jesus Christ made the payment, the payment was made in full. You don't need to add extra works to it. You don't need to, you know, keep your end of a bargain and do all this other stuff. No, what Jesus did, the sacrifice that he made is sufficient to pay the price of sin in full. End of story. Done. Nothing else added to that. No baptism, no works, nothing. No church membership. Nothing needs to be added to that. It just needs to be received as the gift that it is. Look at verse number 10 of Hebrews 10. The Bible reads, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Jesus Christ only had to come and offer up his body a sacrifice one time. He doesn't have to keep coming back and offering over and over and over and over again, dying, raising, dying, raising, dying, raising, which if you believe that you can lose your salvation, he would have to do that. Because if that first crucifixion and resurrection was only good enough to save you the first time, then how is it that it would be able to save you again and again and again once you lose your salvation? You would need him to be crucified afresh and say, well, I've had more sins now. Now you got to pay for that. And you have to, he'd have to keep on dying in order for you to keep on receiving a new payment. But see, if the original payment's good enough, you don't need to keep on getting new payments. It's done. It's covered. That's why he said he was offered once for all to cover everything. Verse number 11, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Remember we're talking about God changed. Well, what about the Old Testament? Weren't people saved through the sacrifice and everything? No, they could never take away sins. Very clear right here. He's saying, you know what? All of those offerings, they never took away sins. It's never capable of doing that. But this man, verse 12, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, forever, we don't need any more sacrifices. There was one that was made forever, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. You are perfected forever. You're sanctified. You're set apart. You're washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. He has set you aside and he has perfected them. He has perfected you forever. That one event, that one payment. You receive that payment, it's done. Thank God he doesn't change. And thank God for people who have existed throughout all ages that he doesn't change. Right? Right? I mean, we think about God, we know God is the ultimate judge, and, and God is a God of justice and equity, right, and fairness and right and truth. How fair would it be to say, well, if you were born in this year, man, you got to work your tail off, you got to do all this stuff, you got to keep these commandments, I don't care how hard it is, you, need, you just need to follow this Old Testament and make sure that you don't slip up. And you got to keep on bringing sacrifices. And if you fail to bring your sacrifice before, you know, and, and you die after you've sinned, and, well, sorry, I guess you're just going to hell. But then, you know, a thousand years later, you got someone who, hey, cool, we're free in, in grace in Christ. Like, how fair would that be? That's not equity. That's not justice. That's why he didn't change salvation. Because it's always been by grace through faith. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Those things were just pictures for the time then present to show that a Savior was going to come that was going to take away the sins of the world. And that's what their faith was in. They carried out those, those sacrifices. It was all symbolic of Jesus Christ who's to come and take away the sins of the world. The faith has always been in the Lord. The faith has always been there to uh, be the Savior of man. 